three reasons why you would want to buy a specialty bar. So number one is you want to make a lift easier. Number two reason to look for a specialty bar would be to make a lift more difficult. And the number three reason to look for a specialty bar would be because you want it. That one, that one, that's the one. What's up everyone, Joe Gray here today to talk about the Radeon Sliding Grip Barbell version 2. This bar aims to provide the converging motion that we might associate with a chest press machine or even a set of dumbbells, but put it in a free weight barbell setting that is more conducive to your typical home gym. Their main goal is hypertrophy, not necessarily strength, but most of us would probably know that a bigger muscle has the potential to be stronger. So even if this only works from a hypertrophy stance, hopefully that translates over into a bigger bench press down the road as well. Radeon, the company who makes this bar, was kind enough to send this bar my way free of charge. I do not have an affiliate link or discount code or anything like that currently. So if you buy the bar, I don't get anything. Full transparency as always. So let's dig into the build and specs of this bar and see what we're looking at. The bar comes with a pretty consistent aesthetic of black with white accents. You can see that in both the handles as well as the end caps and the whole sleeve and shaft as well. The bar is black Cerakoted throughout. Now, some people aren't big fans of Cerakote for a few different reasons. Typically, the biggest concern is, is that it dulls the knurling. Since this is a almost exclusively bench bar, I'm not personally too concerned, and I don't think we have to be super worried here that the knurling is going to be covered up. We also don't have a ton of knurling going on to cover up. So in my opinion, the Cerakote looks good and I think is a good choice over the last several months. So I got this bar in January, uh, sliding plates on and off consistently. You can see there's a little bit of sleeve discoloration, but not much. And I use old school iron plates, so it's not like I've got the nice clean bumpers that maybe do a little bit less there. So we might, over the course of months and years of using this bar consistently, see some wear and tear on those sleeves and discoloration, but the rest of the bar in theory should look brand new. And in my experience so far does. This bar comes with bushings as well as traditional end caps and happens to be the same length as a traditional power bar. So the nice thing there is, is when it's stored away in your storage, it doesn't stand out drastically. I like the nice clean aesthetic. I like the black and white choice. One, because it matches my aesthetic here, but two, because I think it blends in well, even though it's a unique bar without looking too crazy. Now, obviously this bar starts to look quite a bit different when we get to the shaft of the bar. The grooves on the bar, actually when we unpackaged this bar the first time. My daughter called it the unicorn bar. The handles aren't simply free floating. They use these grooves like a track, like a corkscrew uh, would, so they can go back and forth on the bar. This means that when you use it, you have a little bit of tension to push in and out as you go, instead of it just being, again, like putting a piece of PVC pipe or something around a barbell and sliding it back and forth. The handles themselves are big enough for my hands at six foot, 260 pounds. If you have some pretty monster size hands, you may actually run out of room, but I, I doubt it. You'd probably have to be somebody like a, you know, super heavyweight strongman kind of person to get to that point. Now this bar has a 300 pound weight limit. That may sound really weird and really low for a barbell. 
I'll get into in a little bit why it's not a problem. This is not a bar that you're gonna start throwing around one rep maxes and crazy stuff like that. This bar has a very premium feel to it. This was built by somebody who has probably built a barbell or two in the past as opposed to some type of gimmicky slapped together kind of specialty bar. So well done in terms of the overall construction, build, aesthetics, etc. specs of the bar. Let's take a look at how that comes together in terms of the performance within a home gym. So this bar is primarily a pressing bar, meaning bench and overhead press variations. They do claim on their site and on their social media that you can do rows and some inverted kind of uh, close grip pulls and different things like that with it. I tried those and they felt awkward. Uh, being six foot tall, the rear delt ones, I just ran out of room. So bench variations, so flat, incline, etc., as well as overhead press are the two pieces that I believe this bar does and we will talk about as we go forward. A big thing for a home gym is storage. So where are you going to put this? I store my bars behind me over here. When you put it vertically, the handles tend to shift because gravity does its thing and the handles slide as they're supposed to. One ends up at the very bottom and one ends up at the middle. When you go to try and pick that up, you're supposed to grab the handles, not the shaft itself, and try and move it. Well, the handles, again, as you pick it up, try to move on you. They try and slide. Again, they're supposed to do that, but from a movement and mobility stance of getting it in and out of storage and into your rack to use, it's kind of a pain in the ass. What ends up happening almost every single time is you end up grabbing the shaft itself and you get black marks on your hands because the shaft is oiled. You might say, Joe, you just need to grab the shaft firmly and get to work. And I would say, unfortunately, the shaft is lubed up. So if you grab the shaft, you're going to end up with very messy hands. That's what she said. <laughs> Unfortunately, Radeon recommends you need to oil this every couple of weeks, and in my experience, that is definitely necessary. A couple of times where I let the bar sit for about four weeks, maybe even closer to six, you can feel the handles not slide as well. You kind of get this jumpy motion instead of a nice, smooth back and forth. The downside to that, as I mentioned, is one, moving the bar means a lot of times you end up touching and grabbing the shaft and getting black stuff on your hands. And when you're using it, if you bring the bar all the way down to your chest and it touches your shirt, now you've got oil on your shirt. So you're getting black oil on your shirt, on your clothes, on your hands, almost every time using this bar, which is kind of a bummer. You might notice that the handles move individually, so I can move that one without moving this one. This is pretty cool in terms of the general use and feel. The downside is, is that if you are not very cautious as to where your hands start when you unrack the bar, you can pretty easily and fairly consistently in my experience end up with a lopsided bar. The reason is, is because, as I mentioned, they move individually, but there's also no markers. So on a traditional barbell, you have your rings. Those let you know where you should put your fingers. So you figure out if it's pinky on the rings or ring finger on the rings or whatever it might be. And then you can hit that consistently every single time you go to use that bar and you're balanced from left to right. On these, there is no marker. There is a slight notation of the center where the swirls kind of stop, that's it. So you kind of have to do this eyeball effect of here's the middle, I'm about six inches to the right and six inches to the left, and here we go. So I would really like to see some way that those handles get marked, some type of notation 
that the handle is in the same starting position on left and right, I think would be a really nice upgrade for a version three. One of the other things with the handles is, is that because they are moving as opposed to a typical barbell, you have a lot more instability. So dumbbells, cables, those kinds of things, because of the free movement, you have more instability, which means more uh, need to kind of lock in tight. It's the same thing with these handles. So there are some teaching aspects of using this bar that could translate to powerlifting. If we really grab and squeeze that bar, we get what is called radiation, which is stability that comes through our hand, down into our elbows and into our shoulders, which tightens up everything else here, which means we have a much stronger position. Remember I mentioned the 300 pound weight limit? This is where this comes into play. I bench in the 300 pound range. I can hit 225 for like sets of 20. With this, I was repping south of 100 pounds or very close to it for sets of 10 to 15. This bar significantly lowers the load, which can potentially translate into less muscle stimulation, activation, and growth. When I first got this bar, one of the things I wanted to test was Radeon's original claims that this bar would produce better gains in the chest than using a traditional bar or dumbbells. Now, one of the things they typically state is that it is a more difficult set. Now, difficult is important. We want our sets to be hard. Uh, they want, we want them to challenge us, right? An easy set does not produce anything but hard does not necessarily mean better. I reached out to a buddy of mine, James. You may have seen me partner with him on some cool stuff on Instagram. He is a previous competitive powerlifter and teacher and strength coach and is working to become a dietitian as well. He is an all around strong and jacked dude. So he has both experience in the trenches as well as in the books. And I asked him for his initial feelings of this bar. What did he think? And the sum of his statements is basically what I've been saying, which is that the increased range of motion from the converging pattern is a good thing for hypertrophy, but the instability, which would lead to lighter loads, is a bad thing for hypertrophy. So we might end up with a net neutral in terms of hypertrophy development for the chest. If you compare this to say a chest press machine, a chest press has one path. That's it, no matter what. There's no way for you to go up, down, left, right. It's always out and back in the same way. This is conducive to hypertrophy because taking the stability factors out, you can really focus on the target muscle, say the pecs, and push as hard as you can it typically lends itself to using more weight and all things being equal, more weight for more reps with more focused contraction should mean more hypertrophy. This is one of the reasons why you see bodybuilders use a lot of machines. This obviously is not that. Ideally, we would have a actual study, a scientific study to help us figure this out. Good news is they did one. They had nine athletes, so seven men, Two women perform uh, tests using EMG, so that tests muscle activation, um, to see whether these types of sliding grip barbells have more activation of the chest than a traditional barbell would. The cool thing is, is that they found that there was about a 20% increase in muscle activation using these types of bars. Now, a couple of caveats there. One. 20% increase wasn't necessarily across the board. That was means some people were a little bit more, some people a little less, whatever. Muscle activation doesn't inherently mean muscle growth. It is certainly a piece to the puzzle, but it doesn't automatically mean the more activated the muscle, the more it grows. Because again, we have other pieces 
to include there. A more activated muscle with light weight doesn't necessarily produce as much muscle as a maybe less activated muscle, but a lot of weight, right? So there are things to consider. We don't have the end answer of does this produce more gains, but the article kind of finished in a way that I feel like my brain was at with this bar, which is they said, if you enjoy using the bar, we see currently no detriment to using it. There might be a positive, there is very likely no negative. So until we have further information, go ahead and use it, keep using it, and see what you think for you. And that honestly is how I feel about the Radeon Sliding Grip Barbell version two. I think there are things that they could improve for version three. One, making the handles have some type of notch or notification or some type of something to help you center them each time. Something to help with the transportation aspect of putting it away in storage and bringing it back out. And then definitely something around the oiling aspect. I'm not against having to oil a bar every couple of weeks, that's fine, but getting oil on my hands and on my shirt is a real big bummer. This bar as a whole looks good, it's very unique, it's well built and put together, the specs, the bushings, the end caps, everything is just nicely done from a bar perspective. And it's fun to use. I look forward to using this in my program. Because I run Juggernaut AI, I was able to swap this in and out throughout the last couple of months for both bench variations as well as overhead press variations. Bench, I did incline as well as flat. I tried chains and bands. Uh, they all had different pros and cons and fun things. And ultimately, I think that leads me into this bar is going to stay here in my gym will pop in and out throughout my program and rotations. Uh, and I think you're gonna see it show up in other ways as well. You may have seen me get pretty creative on Instagram using this where I hooked it up to my Beyond Power of Ultras and set it on the safeties and used it like an actual chest press. That was a lot of fun, a lot of work to set up, but it was fun to mess with. And when I first shared this bar, my buddy, the Carter Home Gym, commented with the exact idea I had, which is that this, paired with something like the Bulletproof Fitness VTS system, would be awesome on their Smith Machine units for presses. So, I think this bar has a lot of creative potential, a lot of ways to play around with it, and a lot of cool things to do. And again, I had fun with it. Ultimately, this is not your first barbell. It's probably not your first specialty barbell. It might be your fifth specialty barbell. If you're like me and you've got a whole bunch and you like playing around with different barbells and you got a bunch of cable attachments to different things, this is a fun bar to include in the mix. So that's it on the Radeon Sliding Grip Barbell V2. What do you think? Is this bar for you? Or are you gonna buy it? You can put it on your list. You can ask for it for Christmas, whatever. Or are you skipping it entirely? Let me know if you're saying no, why? Is it the price? Is it the oil piece? Whatever. Whatever you mark down there can help Radeon understand why you aren't buying it and maybe make some improvements in the future. In the description, I've also got a link for you. I'll have more details on this bar in the written write-up review on my website. I go into some comparisons about the other bars on the market because oddly enough, there are other companies making similar bars. I get notes from Radeon on kind of the history of this bar and where theirs fits in and all kinds of good stuff. So make sure to check that out. I also have a link in the description for my review pipeline. That will let you vote on and see what I'm working on next. I mentioned the Bulletproof VTS. That is currently on the voting. So if you wanna see me review that and connect it with this bad boy, hop on over to the site, hit that link, vote for it, 
and we'll see it come up and enter the gym probably in the second half of this year. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. And that's it for me today. I hope you learned something new about a cool new barbell. And I'll be back with more Home Gymosimus for all of you very soon. Peace.